name is Cheyenne Chartrand. I'm the spiritual care provider for Nichiwam Inc. Um, and I'll just say this. Um, I said my name is a dancing buffalo woman and I'm from the Green Clan and I'm from Treaty 2 territory. The spiritual care provider portion um, of Nichiwam Inc. looks at the um, spiritual well-being of not only the, the kids that we have in our care but the staff, their families families um, and even the past participants, the kids when they, once they leave here are allowed to, to come back and access um, service ceremony, that kind of stuff. We provide different kinds of teachings, medicine gathering, um, oh geez it could go on and on, but basically spirituality is just kind of defined as um, your connection and relationship to the world around you. So anything that kind of supports that. Um, is part of the program and uh, in its description each one has that we provide individualized treatment plans for, for the children in our care and that goes for this program too so it's not like a blanket or a pan-indigenous approach um, we look at each each child each staff member their family um, and what they need to um, strengthen or renew their connection and their relationship to the world around them. So for some people it looks uh, one way and for other people it's a completely different process or program. In the early stages it was about redefining that word um, for people and it wasn't necessarily, uh, it became not so much success about um, something that's put upon the individual receiving the change but as the program. Um, so if we remain safe, if we remained approachable, um, that's a success because you want someone to ask for that help. You want someone to ask those questions. Um, something like self-awareness is a success where it wasn't there before. Um, someone coming back to ceremony, somebody participating in ceremony that hadn't before. Um, those are all uh, things I think we'd consider success. It's an amazing program. Um, partly for that one reason in terms of looking at spirituality is that connection to the world around you as opposed to a, a culture or a religion or coming from, um, just because I don't know how else to say it, but like a, a, a pedagogical kind of approach. It's not like that at all. Um, there's a lot more peer support. There's a lot more cohort learning. Um, there's a lot more teacher, um, teacher-student relationship that kind of goes both ways, you know, that, that, um, ideally you'd see in kind of like some adult education settings, but isn't really there sometimes. Um, it's more present. And, and um, I think just the extended family model that we use in our practice where it's not really staff, it's aunties and uncles um, and relatives. We, we do the, the making of relatives so that it feels more like a home as opposed to uh, facility. I think it's a little bit of a mix of the two because if I had to say overarching goal, it would be um, to be of service to our community and our community being those future generations, right? Um, and then smaller goals would be to to see that increase in, in their, their knowledge and their participation in their own well-being in their own practice, however they want to practice spirituality, however they want to make those connections. I help provide opportunity, learning opportunities, growing opportunities. Um, I'm there as a support, um, as a guide um, into exploring those things. Um, for our younger ones, I say, you know what, these are all your options and these are the opportunities that you have. These are our ceremonies, these are our practices. Um, what nation do you come from? Can we find out what nation you come from? These are the practices of those nations. Because what happens is we kind of tend to have this pan-Indigenous approach to teaching um, and, and learning and expect that, that, that that's the way that it should be, um, as opposed to um, helping the kids that we care for, but also our staff, um, look at themselves a little bit more and they have that relationship with themselves a little bit more. Um, because if we can do that and if we can strengthen that part, then that's modeling the way that they can look at the world around them. And I mean, in terms of education, that's like whole person learning, you know, um, accessing all those parts of themselves to learn. And, and I think if you're learning that way, you retain a lot more knowledge um, better across even just Canada. There's several different nations of people 
And so even in Manitoba, we have like uh, what people refer to as Cree, but like they're in We have Anishinaabe, we have um, the Dene people, we have Métis. And then as you um, move in either direction, there's there's other nations. There's um, Choctaw, there's um, all kinds. There's Bled, Salish, Hidatsa, if you're going farther north uh, to the west coast. And... Um, all those nations have different practices, different cultures, different approaches, uh, different ceremonies, and different reasons why they, they do the things that they do. And, and when we take a, a pan-Indigenous approach, um, it's like we're saying everybody's the same and putting everybody under one blanket um, and not recognizing that those are distinct nations um, with their own laws, with their own governance, with their own um, methods of education and teaching and learning. Um, their own belief systems, their own value systems, and we're just kind of making everybody um, one. Even in this day, um, you have people who don't know what nation they come from. Um, so even even that, that simple um, request for information, you know, can be a really big deal. Um, you know, it'd be really difficult sometimes to to tailor everything the way that we'd like it to be tailored to. But even just finding that identity that piece. Um, is really important. I think when I thought about it, it was more about whole person learning, you know, whole person um, experiencing, you teaching all the parts of the self, like the emotional, the mental, the physical, the spiritual. And when you're tapping into those things, um, I think learning is a whole different experience. Um, like when you're younger and they take you out on field trips and you're, you're learning something about uh, the place that you're going to is very much different than sitting and being talked at um, by somebody in the classroom. You can teach the same message in so many different ways. Um, and I think a lot of people kind of assume Indigenous education is about um, all going to the bush and learning how to pick sage and smudging and, and stuff like that. And, and it's not, I mean, there's a real, like if you want to look at it, there's a, a real case for um, natural stewardship, things like that, like uh, the water protectors. Um, that's that's all Indigenous education, right? Because you need water. You need um, the sustainable harvesting. If you're going to collect medicines, you need to know what you're picking, when you're picking, how you're picking, um, what the ground looks like, what, you know, the acidity of the soil, like, you know, all that kinds of stuff come into play. Given that we have like a really large population of young people who are going to be adults and taking over a lot of the positions, um, I think we need to to expand a lot of that to think of um, the economic development um, of our communities. And I don't mean communities as in just First Nation communities. I mean our cities, our towns, um, because the baby boomers are going to be kind of aging out and retiring. We're going to have a lot of um, positions to fill um, and, and, and companies and um, we're going to need like uh, some really, really, really really strong advocates in terms of the environment and our nature and our water and, and just changing the way that we look at how we treat those as part of um, our world. I think things like transportation, right, is, is a big one and a, and a simple one that some families don't have. Um, to, to access things like if you want to access land-based education sometimes families got to go a long way or, or, or it's really difficult for them to access any kind of um, activity or land-based education if they can't get out of the city they don't have the means to do that um and i think a lot of support and advocacy for for things like uh, our water and our natural um, protection um of the the land the areas that have the the medicines like we need clean water you know, we need places to have clean water to do all the, the things that we need to do with, with our, our children. I just think that it's it's really important to keep it, um, an open mind when we're talking about education and learning, um, because a lot of a lot of the times it's um, the learners that guide us in terms of what they want to learn, what they need to learn. Like this world is changing so fast, and and I think a lot of the times we're stuck um, a few decades ago in terms of uh, the things that we're teaching or the ways that we're teaching it. Um, and those things need to be looked at. They need to be made more flexible. Um, they need to, to adapt. That's avoiding that that um, 
being talked at or being taught to uh, approach. And that pedagogy kind of comes with pedagogy or classroom learning, or classroom based. It, it doesn't quite work like that. Um, when you kind of engage with people, and, and the teacher is also the student, and the student's also the teacher, and that reciprocity is there, that's, that's a big part of, of learning and education.